And now the end is here and so I'll face my final curtain my friends I say it clear I state my case of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full cause I've traveled it and every highway but more, much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets, cause I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention, cause I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption I've planned each charted course each careful step along my byways oh no oh no not me I've done it God's way. Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew when I beat off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there were doubts, I had it all. And spit it out I faced it all and I stood tall and did it my way I've loved I've laughed I've cried I've had my fill my share of losing and now, as life passed by, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no. Oh, no, not me. I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he is not to say the things that he truly feels and not the words of one who kneels the record show I took my blows and did it my way Yes, it was my way. Who's next? Christina. know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day 
cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide onto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and sea are one. In the depths of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds streaming, dreaming beneath the snow heart, your dreams of spring, trust the dreams, for in them is the hidden gate to eternity. Your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your ling, limbs, then shall you truly dance. Nancy Sasko, Courtney Il, 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 Ilner. Did I get a court, sir, Courtney? Yes, I think there are, I know. Incidentally, th th this, is, this is just to make an impression. I couldn't find anything better. Can you hear me, can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me clearly, Charlotte? Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, all offerings to made will be made to a charity that Shirley will decide on. I think we have a pretty good idea that she will give it to the right one. Uh, there is going to be a song that we will hear later on. And I would like you to listen carefully to the words. It is sung by Donovan's uncle and my brother. Yes, and, and that is not coming through. Which one? This one, this one yeah. Uh, Ladna Seymour Dehenny was born on the 14th of April, 1944, to two <coughs> rather apprehensive parents. He was later declare, to declare on several occasions that this date should be declared a national holiday during a week of remembrance and celebrations. This was usually done noisily. Shirley instructed me clearly that there should be no long and dubious tales as there would be a mixed audience. It is unfortunate that it took such a sad occasion to see Nancy, John, Paulie, and I miss Francis and Oki. Laddie was a quintessential family man 
and loved all his family passionately. Like they had many attributes, but his soft spot was always education. A few examples. He always encouraged the acquisition of knowledge. Not only encouragement, but with tangible financial grants that allowed, in one instance, tuition to the final certificate at the Norman Manley Law School. He came from a family of dentists. His great-grandfather, grandfather, and two uncles. <clears throat> when he was three years old, his father presented him with a pair of pliers, and he proceeded to demolish Sister Frances's Christmas doll, a, a, a very pretty doll thereby ending a budding dental career. In later years, he assisted several talented technicians to pursue and be successful in that much maligned profession. Camp to the world is a kiddies camp held in various locations during summer holidays organized by Mrs. Barbara Rudd. The purpose is to take children out into the beautiful Jamaican countryside, the most beautiful country in the world, and show them not only with fun and gaiety, but also with training and various skills in arts and craft and even etiquette. There, there are about three people in here that need to join that class. Paul, stop looking like that. <clears throat> The cost of transportation, food, accommodations, and other auxiliary expenses are substantial. And Laddie never hesitated to bring moments of joy and happiness to those children. John Mills, is a school named after an esteemed educator located near the Brentford Road office in which Laddie took a personal interest, particularly in the athletic development, which is a substantial part of a school's curriculum, by providing equipment and the like, consistently making that institution a formidable competitor in its grade. There are many other examples of his generosity, but, but I believe you all understand his quiet kindness and generosity. You know that he loved his children dearly and surely was always his adored partner. And he even got another soft spot when, courtesy of Karen, grandson Axel appeared. 
he was always conscious of those working with him. Mr. Gray, Sharon, Karen, Donald, are all names familiar to me. Because he spoke about them often and he treasured them all. Laddie attended many schools, too numerous to mention in the two and a half hours that Shirley said I was to speak for. But I recall that along with two other friends going to view the electrical generation generation plant. It's a windmill at Monroe College. When we visited the headmaster's home for introduction, <clears throat> the headmaster's wife, Mrs. Roper, on being presented, was asked, do you remember Lady Doheny? In a burst of hilarious delight, she replied, remember, remember, how could I ever forget him? And neither will I. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy, Laddie's middle sister. And Joanna and I are here with much love to support Shirley and the girls. We're here to honor Laddie with the beautiful eyes, so like mom's, on behalf of the Doheny siblings. Francis, Joanne, and I, we would like to thank everyone for the outpouring of love we have all received. For Joanne and I, Laddie was our rock. From Joanne was nine and I was 16 when Dad died. Our Cayman cousins, Bobby and Hazel Bodden, and all the Watler and Bodden family sent much love for Shirley and the family. Beautiful memories remain for all of us. He was much loved and will be dearly missed. Okay, Colin, Darcy, Monty, and all his compadres from early prep school and teenage days have shared such heartwarming stories of friendship etched in gold which can never be broken. Hands, Neil, my boys, Joanne's kids, Francis's kids, all send love and blessings. Neil has asked me to read, Neil has asked me to read this poem. It's an Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hands. From Neil, Carl, and Troy and family. Hans sends special blessings also. 
Maybe I said that already, I don't know. So goodbye, our brother. You have taken a good chunk of love and our hearts with you. Thank you.
Paul had had. Courtney, I couldn't afford a folder. Yeah, that's good. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near. So loved, so missed, so very dear. Losing a loved one is one of the most difficult things that we can go through. So much so, when it was a beloved husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, or friend. Laddie is one of those things to all of us here today. No words can express the sorrow that we are all feeling today or fill the void that has been left behind. Henry James said, sorrow comes in great waves, but it rolls over us and although it may almost smother us, it passes and we shall remain. Ladna Seymour Dini, born in 1994, 1944, thanks for the correction, has just celebrated his 78th birthday on April 14th. In his usual style, he celebrated with his close friends and family that were present in Jamaica. He would not allow his illness to keep him down. Laddie was the second of four children born to Ladna Seymour Dehaney, senior, who unfortunately I never had the pleasure of meeting, and Verda Margrethe de Haney. He married Shirley, and together they had three girls. He was a lone bull in the pen, as he was surrounded by seven women. Shirley, his three daughters, Karen, Catherine, and Christina, and his sisters, Francis, Carolyn, also known as Nancy, and Joanne. He loved all seven of them and was very happy when Karen gave him a grandson, Axel, as finally there was another male in the family. He always welcomed the opportunity for some male companionship. This was personally very good for me. For the close to 50 years that I was fortunate to know him, as I always knew where I could go to relax and have a drink. In the early years, after I met his youngest sister, Joanne, she lived with Laddie and his family on and off. This further strengthened the bond between the both of them. Laddie had many passing passions. However, the passions that he never lost 
to the day of his passing was a lover for his family, his business, and his country. As you all know, Laddie for the betterment of his family migrated twice from Jamaica, but could not keep away from his beloved country and his business, L.S. Duhaney. However, he constantly lived with the frustration of being separated from his children, grandchildren, and sisters. He kept in touch with them constantly and would not miss an opportunity to attend an important family function wherever in the world it was. There is a message that Laddie constantly bestowed to his family and friends. He always said that you cannot save someone else. All you can do is show them the path and hope they save themselves. And did he ever show us the path? Life is not defined by accumulation of wealth and status. It is about the impact and legacy a man leaves behind. Although he will be sadly missed by his family through the impact on his wife, children, sibling, family and friends, the legacy of Ladna Seymour Dehaney will always live on with us. that somewhere in the darkest night a candle glows I believe for everyone who goes astray someone will come to show Above a storm, the smallest bird can still be heard. I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky then I know why I believe 
would ask you to join me every time, every time I hear a newborn baby cry, Dwight, 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 the trumpet for me, please. Come, the man, come on, come sing with me. Everybody sing with me. Ready now? Every time I hear a newborn baby We all stand. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Ladner for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of all the saints. I bless the body of our brother Ladner with holy water that recalls his baptism of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness of his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness of his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Ladna was incorporated into Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Ladner. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and his friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In our boundless compassion, in your boundless compassion, console us who mourn, give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone on before through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not be answered. Mm -hmm. 
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives. He lives within my heart. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the paths of righteousness, he for his own. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives. I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fare no ill. For thou art with me on thy rod, and stuff me comfort still. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives. He lives within my heart. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives. He lives, he lives within my heart. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Amen. We'll have the reading of the... <clears throat> we'll have the reading of the second lesson after which... Could you, Sir Kevin, Sir Kevin, one minute. Well, we've already done the second lesson. Right? Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do for this thing here, right? And Mr. Haddad is going to go up here. Okay, no problem. All right. Can I move up? Yes. You tell me? Yes. I've already done it. <laughs> Okay, brothers and sisters, we're going to sing How Great Thou Art. And you're going to get a chance to, to give generously. Amen? Oh, Lord, my God. Softer, softer, softer. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior. God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how
sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Let us sing the last verse as we stand. Amen. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to me how great thou How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. You may be seated. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, giver of life, conqueror of death, you are with us in every moment of grief. We ask that you be pillow and pillar at this time. And as we reflect on your word, we pray and ask even now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen. I read to you a portion of scripture taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, reading from verse 1 through to 8. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is here that Solomon writes and he places several things that humans will encounter in a rhythm that causes it to be embraced regardless of the culture which you come from. 
These are, by some theologians, classified as goads. They're actually nails set there to prick you to life, to bring you to a reality, to stir a conversation, to cause you to think again. Because what Solomon puts here happens to us all, regardless of where we're from. But for some, it is used for another reason. It is used to state to us how powerless we are as we live. Human beings have a, have, as human beings, we have a tendency to place a degree of importance and uh, to ascribe to ourselves a certain degree of power. And Solomon starts and he says, there's an appointed time for everything. In saying that, what he does is he, he removes from us our own timing. When he says there is an appointed time for everything, he's actually saying this, regardless of what you might plan, it is not said that it will work how is it you have planned but that when it happens, it will happen in its own timing. If it does work out as you have planned, in the time that you have planned, then bless God. For then he goes on and he says, a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. He removes, he, he goes further and he says this, he's putting us in almost by a noose. We did not, as human beings, set the time of our birth. And we do not know the years that we'll get. And then even Moses in the psalm says, teach me to number my days. He says, teach me to take account of my days. And then saying that what Moses is asking, that he might cherish them. Solomon goes further. A time to plant and a time to uproot the plant. The seasons will change in which we function. And we have no power over how and when the seasons change. The seasons of very life will change. And as you read the book and you go on further in Ecclesiastics, he presents something, uh, the, the, the slow deterioration that we experience as human, as human beings uh, uh, as we mature. He goes on and he, he points, us, points out to each and every one of us that our strength is vain. Our beauty is vain. Even the things that we will find ourselves getting involved in he says the time come when human beings lose desire in the things in which they are involved and they will give it up and hence for solomon life is a journey the passage here is, is not something that we should anchor ourselves in but to participate in it's the greeks the greeks would say that when you go to the theater the mask that the actor wears the voice that you hear is the voice of the character, but it's the voice of the person of the character coming through the, the mask. And hence we have the word persona. And hence it, it is that involvement as we interact. And as we interact with each other, Solomon reminds us that interact on a level where the essence that is called you, I refer to the Greeks once again. Because for the Greeks, and, and, and it's important that we understand the Greek thought, for the Greeks, the person that you encountered is not there in the urn. And if there was a casket here today, that person would not be in the casket. That person would have been with you in the display of the character that you experienced as they walked along. And hence, the essence remains, the, the, the physicality, the physical person, the, phys the house in which they dwelt is gone. Yes, that is gone. And we all understood that. But the writing, the embedding of the person, 
that you will remember because many times you will not remember the face but you will remember the voice you will remember a feeling that you got with the person being around you'll remember how you felt in engaging in a particular conversation with the person and hence for the Greeks that is the person themselves that is you encountering the person all over again and that is why we have the statement where it says it's it's how you made me feel it's not so much what you said but how you made me feel with what you said you, you see uh, have you ever heard people greeting I used to teach ethics and I wrestled with people using indecent language and it was a senior one of my seniors at the time when I was approaching ordination, I said to him, I can't go on the ethics retreat. And he said, why? I said, they'll be playing a movie in which it's, it would be laced with indecent language. And he said, when, what's the struggle with indecent language? Because people are using, using it around you daily. And I said, it's, it rubs me the wrong way. And he says, well, look at it this way. In Jamaica, you can greet somebody with what you would classify vulgar language, and they wouldn't be vexed because they would understand that in the context in which it's been used at the time, it's not a curse word, it's a greeting. So hence, it is now not the word, but the tone with which the word comes. And he says, and the same word used with a different tone becomes an offense. And hence now, it is not so much the words that we wrestle with, but the tone with which they come. And hence, it's the tone of life with which we live and experience each other that we wrestle with. And the tears that will be shed today will be based on the, the tone with which our brother Dehaney shared himself. Because everyone would have experienced him at another place and another space, in another arena of his life. And those who would have been close to him would have been there. His wife is sitting here this, today. Good day, ma'am. I greet you well. She would have experienced him in a way in which she could explain him. And even if somebody experienced him during the day and they say, it, the man is draconian in his approach, she could paint him and romanticize his image in a way that you couldn't see him crushing a fly. And why is that so? because of the hats that he would have worn in life. But Solomon says there's one thing that should be consistent about us as we interact with each other. And it's our character and how we tell our truth. And how is it we share ourselves with each other. You see, Solomon says there, there, are, many, there, there are many things that human beings will do. And he says, he says this in, in Ecclesiastes. He says, I see a man store up wealth for his sons, and they do not get it. He says, I see men dig wells, and they never drink from them. He says, I see men build houses in which they never live. And he says, and this too is vanity. And he says, I see another struggle under the sun that a man has and have none with which to share it. And he says, I saw this as a, a struggle from, given by God himself. But as you wrestle with the theologians and those who would come with the Jewish thinking, they would say, what Solomon is actually saying this is, how could you live and not share? That's what Solomon is actually saying. How could you live and have enough to share and not share? And hence, when you read, when we heard the remembrance of our brother Ladna, giving to camps so that people could have a different experience even and it's it's more likely that he would not have met many of the people who benefited from that from those camps but in allowing them to have a new experience he would have shared in their lives and Solomon says that is living because what our brother would have understood in his sojourn is this. As riches increase and as possessions increase, they who must consume it will also increase. I said that to somebody once and I said, could you imagine the good book telling you this? As we wrestle about 
giving and how much we give. The good book is not tactful in saying to you, when wealth increases, they who will consume it will also increase. So you can be here sitting alone and you're poor and there's nobody. But the good book is saying to you, as you increase, you will find others come and attach themselves. But our brother Ladner says to us in his living, I am not afraid of that. I am willing to, to share. And hence Solomon brings us to another place where he says, it's not the amount that you have which, which to share. And this speaks mostly to our most intimate space. He says this, a morsel among friends is like a feast. A morsel among friends is like a feast. So when, 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 when my brother could say, being around him or going to see him was a space in which I could have a drink. What's really saying, he provided me with a getaway. I knew being around him, I could relax, I could recline. I could show a part of myself that I could not show in another space. And that in itself is wealth. That another human being can find themselves at home and comfortable around you. That they can just let their hair down and know that whatever happens in this space is between you and I. Nobody else. I'm not afraid to share who I am. Not many people are afforded that. And not many people afford others that opportunity. And that in itself is greater than anything else that you could encounter. And then Solomon calls to us and he says, what is most important is this. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. He says, when everything is good and when you're healthy, when you're strong, because he says, the time will come when if you live long enough, the challenges of your mortality will become real. You see, we all pray and ask for long life. But with long life comes a bit of arthritis. With long life is going to come the bending of the knees, the bending of the back, the shaking of the hands. And your mobility would have become less. And Solomon explains all of that. And that's a part of, of the long life that we don't want to think about. Oftentimes when we think about long life, we think about us still being about 30 and 25. And Solomon is saying, let's skip the shenanigans and get to what is real. Because he says, the time will come when the keepers of the house will begin to tremble. And he writes in a way in which you would almost say, what foolishness is this that Solomon has penned? Because he starts by saying, the clouds return after the rain. And they who come to the casement no longer come. And you're saying, when do the clouds ever come after the rain? And it's only a discussion to be had with those of us who, I believe the clouds came after the rain when I was about 10 and they gave me my spectacles. And hence, the clouds coming after the rain is when your eyes become foggy. Naturally, they become foggy. He says, the time comes when the clouds return after the rain, and the keepers of the house begin to tremble. And the grinders become, the grinding is low because the grinders are few. You lose your teeth. And he says, and the strong men bend themselves. Your legs naturally bend and he says and everything becomes too high in the way you no longer have that stride that you once had and he says and everything is high in the way you don't lift your legs as high as you used to and he says and the golden cord is broken and the silver bowl is bent and he speaks of the human body and what it used to be like and it's no longer the same and then he goes into a space that many of us don't want to think about. But that's the time when you'll begin to know those who really cherished you. He says, the doors of the house become shut to the streets. You no longer go out. 
And then he says, and the room and the door to the room becomes a shut to the house. You no longer leave your room. And he says, and the mourners come to visit. You see, what he's saying is this. Those who are visiting you at that time, they're already preparing their headspace that you are departing. And hence, though it appears to be visitation, Solomon is really saying, the mourners come. And then he says, and man goes to his long home. That's the time you know your value. Why? Because those who come will be coming for you. They will be coming to see you at your most vulnerable. They will be coming to see less than half the person they knew. But in their minds, they would have remembered the good times. And for those who shared in the life, the life of our brother Ladner would have understood the man who he was. Until the time that he decided to retire from business. And to wrestle with that decision. Because all that is human. But what you can joy in is this. That you were there with him in that transition to make life easier. Yes, we understood this is who you are. And now we understand this is what life is saying. And hence, Solomon calls to us and he says, he says, love your friends and love your family. He says, be truthful in your living. He says, be, be, he, he makes it clear. He says, be truthful in your living. Why? Because only two things you get in this life that none can take. He says, the food that you've eaten, none can take. The God that you serve, none can take. And for Solomon, it's that everything else that is good in your life will come from God himself. So what he's really penning and saying, don't worry about the good things being removed. It's God will continue to present them to you. And that's why David being the warrior that he was, could you understand, if you read the life of David, you, you would wrestle with understanding how is it he could stand in the temple to worship. Just read David's life. Even if you were to read 1 Samuel, reading, reading the, the, the last couple of chapters, there is something that David does there when it says that he raided several towns and he left no man or no woman alive. And you said, this man raids several towns, he leaves none alive. And he's lifted up as a saint. And that's the God we serve. That in coming to him and being honest, and that's why David says this, he says, I, I come before you naked. I'm unable to hide who I am. And he says to God, that is how I come. And this is the same man that is able to pain upon reflection of his life and the things that he has gone through, that he's able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest mine head with oil. And look at what he says. And this is a part that oftentimes we say without even thinking. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That God will keep me in all situations. And hence today as you live and as you've lost a father, friend, a grandfather, 
is to understand that you, you've, you've really encountered a human being who lived his life fully with you. And as he lived his life fully with you, now the responsibility is this. How do I transmit what I've learned from him to others? Because for his grandson and for his daughters, the Indians would have said this from their culture. My parents give me birth, but my grandparents give me ascension. My parents give me birth, but my grandparents give me ascension. So my parents have allowed me to come into this world. But from my grandparents, I receive history. From my grandparents, I receive the behavior that my parents have. From my grandparents, I receive that which they placed in my parents to, to place in me. And hence, all grandparents are never gone. They're still here with us as we live. What we learned from our parents is what they gave to them. I say this to you. Weep for your husband, my sister. I say to his daughters, cry for your father. I say to his friends and to his sisters, Continue to love him and continue to hold him there. But he's gone on before us and one day we too shall follow. Let us pray. Giver of life and conqueror of death, you are with us in every time of mourning. Lord, we pray and ask even now that you touch, Father, the family members of our brother Ladna. God, that you'll comfort his wife, comfort his daughter, his grandchildren, or grandchild, Holy Spirit of God. We ask even now that you touch his friends, Lord God. God, for the, the heritage that he has left, preserve it, Father. For you promise that those who loved you, you will not cause their heritage to fail or fall. Sweet Spirit of God, bind them together with cords that cannot be broken. And continue, Father to be with them here and now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We do that again. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom come, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father. Blessed be Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Father in heaven, you gave your son Jesus Christ to suffer and to gave your son Jesus Christ to suffering and to death on the cross and raised him to life in glory. Grant us patient faith in time of darkness and strengthen our hearts with knowledge through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, Father of mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray thee, with all those who mourn, the casting every care on thee. They may know the consolation of thy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Ladna and for all those who we love, but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest 
Let light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Ladna with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and make of all mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us commend our brother Ladner to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Ladner, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil and set him free from every bond that he may rest with your saints in the eternal habitation where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God forever and ever. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Ladna. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive, Ladna, into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the gracious company of the saints in light. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we're going to use a beautiful voice to sing the rose. I'm going to ask my adopted daughter and sister, Brittany Hart, to sing it for us. Tell me, Michael. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tears.
Beautiful voice. I want to hear you sing Sinatra my way one of these days. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. And we ask Brittany to join me as well. Pay 
Mary, que yo lo soy. No, 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 necesito no più. Con te yo le vivro, con te partiro. Su nave per mari que yo lo so. No, 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 necesito no più. Con te yo le vivro, con te partiro. The poem by Karen Doheny. Okay. Well done. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Which, on behalf of myself, my sisters, and my mother, I would like to thank everyone for celebrating my father, Ladner Seymour Duhaney's life and legacy. I speak for my family when I say our foundation, our rock, <laughs> has been taken away. If there are any words to have described my father, the first was his utmost honesty. He was the most honest person I have ever known. His generosity had no bounds. He had so many people and his humility. He never spoke about the things he did with others. He didn't want or need praise. He lost his own father when he was young and has taken so much responsibility his whole life. And he did it without complaint. He often mentioned how much he missed his own father and wished that his children had met him. He said that a kinder man didn't exist. Well, Daddy, I think your father would have been proud. Your altruism, love, kindness will be remembered for generations to come. I really don't know how much, how each day forward without you in it will be. Right now the pain is unbearable and we are each and all mourning your presence. I want to add a special thanks to my mother, the other rock of the family, for all the time and care she has spent looking after you and us. I know how much you love, loved her. We leave her today with you in our hearts and with wonderful memories. I know you will continue to guide the way and walk beside us. Love you always, Daddy. have a song at this time.
Seems we're experiencing some technical difficulties. We all rise for the benediction. I know we already said goodbye, but I'm going to ask that you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. Please greet the family before you go and please be safe on the road. Amen. Amen. <laughs>